Uh, hey everybody. Uh, welcome back. As promised, another weekly episode, but this time a very special episode of This Is Sus. Um, we have a very special guest today because we're doing a very special show. Um, this week I began watching Council of Dads, which is a show I only caught wind of because my friend Michael added me with a clip that was on Twitter that the show account posted as if they were proud of it. Uh, it was the most insane fucking thing I have ever seen. So, you know, I still watch This Is Us this week, and depending on how long this goes, I'll have the recap of that in the back end. But I might just save it for next week, because Council of Dads was so fucking disconcerting and evil that I decided to bring in an expert. I decided to bring in my sister, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Hi, Felix. (laughs) So... What did you think? <laughs> Just I'm going to get into the recap of the episode, but what did you think of this I mean, awful thing I made you watch? You told me how bad it was, like, before I started watching it, but I, it was so, it was bad beyond my wildest imagination. Like, I couldn't come up with an idea of something that bad. It was like, <laughs> the ways it was bad, I I can't even wrap my head around It's almost invented like it does follow the NBC procedure of unthinkable tragedies and hating your audience. But it's worse than anything they've ever made. I can't imagine. I don't think I've ever taken in a worse piece of art. Like it made me feel so bad. (laughs) And it was like glossy. Like I was surprised when you said it was really bad. I thought it was going to have like like a low production value. It had a very high production value, but it was like, I mean, even like little things in the production of it were just like so off. Like they had those drone shots, but the drone was always like too high or too low. (laughs) Like really little things like that, where I was like, this, this is just, and you know, it's like, they hate us. Like they did that because they hate us. They're like, oh, the drone's too high. Who cares? Just run it. It's fine. Like it's, <laughs> it was made for me to watch by someone who hates me. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. This is like with This Is Us, there are some human dimensions to it where I think that <laughs> like the writers and producers are very cynical, but they're also assholes. They're Hollywood assholes who are like, I'm making a good thing. I, I'm doing a good job on this shitty show for idiots. Yes. I, I'm a great writer. But no one who made this thought this. This no. is just like shoveling slop into people's <laughs> mouths. <laughs> like, what? Think of the actors. Like, I just, like, there was, it, it's like, there was like m- so low effort into it, but like, it wasn't the, like, they were like enthusiastic and energetic, but like, they didn't like, they're, their brains weren't in it or something. Like, what would it be like to be an actor on that show? It's like humiliating. Yeah. It's could be the lowest thing that you could achieve as an actor. Yeah. It could, this is what will bring actors back to like uh Byzantine times when actors were thought of the, as the lowest of society, like below <laughs> some type of professional, professional pedophile <laughs> would be an actor. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't think I would take the part. Like, it's like the parts that they're offering, the lines that they had to read, it's not worth any amount of money. <laughs> no, there. it's, the lines are, I guess I should uh, explain the premise of this show. So, Council of Dads, it's about a guy who has a family, a non-conventional family that's made up of every demographic that Hollywood yeah, liter- sickos. Yes. yeah. Every, literally everyone that Hollywood sickos pretend to care about, but would have their organs harvested to extend their lives. <laughs> um, the father, the guy, Scott, he's just like a non-specific upper middle class guy. There's yeah. stuff alluded to in the pilot of him, like giving up his dreams and working hard for his family. But he could just do anything like he could. He could be an executive for Monsanto. He could yeah. be a lawyer. Who knows? Right, he lives in a big mansion, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, well, yeah, the the writers and producers of the show are so evil, they're like, he's just a regular average Joe, and his house has, like, 50 bedrooms. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Like, it looks like a bed and breakfast. Yes, yes. Um, 
the so he has a biracial daughter from his first marriage whose mother is just like disappeared it's never yeah he, th- i hate that because he, they have like a really brief conversation about that and he's like your mother wasn't ready to raise a child not in a racist way she just wasn't <laughs> ready to raise a child <laughs> yeah, you can tell that there was probably something written in by the 60 year old uh screenwriter at first it was like she went off to go smoke crack, and then, the, and then someone was like, "You can't do that." And he, he was like, "Oh, she wasn't ready." Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so somewhere along the lines, he met Charlotte, who's an OBGYN, because that's just like the only way characters can have worth if they're yes. just a complete overachiever, like strivers. Yes. They a, yeah, they had a son named Theo, another son named JJ. Scott gets cancer. Like, the second a character gets cancer in an NBC show, the doctor is just like, you're fucking dead. You're yeah, dying soon. W- <laughs> okay, you're a goner. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in, in a moment of clarity, he goes, you know who should raise my non-conventional family? My friends. If I die, a council of my friends will raise my kids. And so the show jumps around time. Like, this is up us but this is us jumps forward and backwards and way forwards in time it's very uh it's very ambitious it's like a a bad story based video game but (laughs) this is it just only moves super forward like you'll be watching and everything moves at a normal sort of uh family melodrama pace of a few few days at a time a few weeks and then it'll just be like uh two years later yeah, they can't write the scene, so they're like, um, it was next fall. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they have to do that to fit all the tragedies they wanted. Yeah, and they, like, couldn't think of how to write the scene of, like, him dying or something, so they just have, a, they're like, next fall, uh, yeah, dad died this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to recap the plot. Lucy, you just, like, jump in with anything horrible that I missed. Uh, okay. Let's get through this piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> so the show starts with JJ, the youngest son of Scott's family. He's afraid to do a rope swing over their lakefront property that in real life would cost $3 million. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while not even a real train song plays, it's like a fake train song. We get narration, and it's from Luli, who's Scott's first daughter from the marriage where the mom was just like, I'm I'm not feeling it. This kid has bad vibes. I'm going away. (laughs) And she explains their family dynamic. Um, She's also waiting on a phone call from the New Yorker. Oh, I hate that so much. Like, we don't even know what the communication with the New Yorker is. Like, maybe she just called about her subscription or something. (laughs) Like, we don't know why this would be, like, something to talk about. Yeah, Yeah, she's just one of those people that complains about David Remnick. Like... (laughs) Not yeah, not talking he's... about Michael Bennett enough. <laughs> yeah, he's been the editor for like way too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, it was fucked up during the scene. I had no idea what the age of Luli was supposed to be. Like no, she could have I... been anywhere from like fifteen to twenty eight. I, no, I thought she was his wife. <laughs> like, I thought she was his um new wife, and they had like a blended family or something. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's just, but, like, I think that was in a better written show, like, they would have explained that. Like, it, it's explained yeah. later that she's waiting to, the most trite thing, she's waiting for an internship with the fucking New Yorker. Uh, but it, the way they explained it, like, you're just supposed to accept, like, you were just supposed to pick that up. Yeah, uh, completely. Yes, yes. So, Charlotte, uh, the OBGYN wife, coaxes JJ into accepting it's okay to not do the rope swing today. But JJ gives this fucking insane anxiety spiel that's like, but but if I don't do the if I don't do the rope swing now, uh the school starts tomorrow and then I'll never do it. And then I'll be nine and then I'll be dead. And it's like another case of Hollywood writers thinking literally everyone, including an eight-year-old boy, thinks in the same like harried s- sort of false quirky tones that they do. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. I like I you know, it's not very nice to say this about a child, but I fucking hate JJ. And then <laughs> it's like you you know, you go through it, you you look at the disgusting like he's like smug, even though he's eight years old. It's like <laughs> you, I hate you. And then and he like oh he's he's like condescending to his parents. He's like, hey, yeah, kindergarten was a shit show today. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like as I'm sure you'll get to, we find out that we're actually the asshole for hating jj it's like <laughs> oh god damn it like, yeah, yeah yeah uh I'll, I'll get into that part later when it's we get a very bad scene that was astounding it. like i can't i i couldn't even believe what i was seeing i was like I, okay yeah we'll get to it though so scott like to show that he's the good type of dad like the carefree but gives his kids <sighs> less than dads he goes on the rope swing with jj and it's a big moment that you know they swim back and he gets a call and he, you know, he's like, hello, New Yorker. Is my daughter, is my daughter going to, you know, work for Leon Weisseltier? <laughs> and, but they're like, this is the cancer doctor. You have cancer. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't really, they didn't waste time on this one. Like, and this is us. Yes. And this is us. It's just like sort of, sort of like soy dialogue for 30 minutes. In the first episode, and then they're like, "All right, now you can have cancer." But this, sh- they, it's not even four minutes, and they're like, "No, yeah, this guy's dying." Y- completely, yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Scott, next scene, he's in the hospital. He's waking up from surgery. Do t- t- you describe how they did this scene, <laughs> the opening of the scene where he's waking up from surgery for can- Wait, for I- late for leg cancer? He walks through the door after his surgery and he looks like shit. Like it's obviously been horrible, like horrendous, horrific surgery. And he walks in and he's like, um, hello. Uh, yeah. Anybody home? It's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. So the doctor, the doctor who did the surgery is. Because everyone in these shows knows each other, even though Americans yes. have just like zero community or friends. Yes. Just like every person, if you're a good person, you have 500 friends, including like the chief surgeon of the hospital. Yes. Yes. Who, yes. Who sh- yes. shows you pictures of your cancer leg on his iPad, which is what this guy does. Uh, right. And he's like breaking the FERPA or whatever. Oh, wait, it's not, or, or HIPAA. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like he like tells the wife all about his diagnosis when he hasn't told the guy first. It's like you should be disbarred. Buddy. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like in the like running between the cancer ward and the ob guy ward. It's like, sir, please. <laughs> <laughs> no doctor uh, in the NBC world would last in a hospital, even during a doctor shortage. Uh, <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so they you know there's like the soy scene with the doctor so they go home everyone goes home uh and we see like the assortment of scott and his family's world there's the doctor uh there's another guy who i forgot about there's an old like an old surly guy who in the real world he would just be like this q anon guy that everyone <laughs> in the family hated <laughs> he's like a kind of um like a a uh, like cheap, ver- like a kind of um, like low rent Craig T. Nelson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's off brand. <laughs> yeah, he's very old, very off brand. Like in real life, he'd be like, "Did you hear that Obama was secretly <laughs> executed today?" And everyone would be like, "Larry, stop it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they'd be friends with him because, like, they read like they read a, a a tweet storm from Danny Zucker about how you should be friends with people you disagree with, right? And we know that they're real; they're like super liberals because yeah, he's yeah. like cha- he chants RBG and that another, was like, sucked. That it was hor- like literally my eyes watered during it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so so he uh, they have a party and it's supposed to be like, hey, you know. Everyone just try, we're just trying to figure out this thing called life. Some crazy things happen, like the dog will eat our welcome home cake that wasn't done right in the first place. Oh. That's life. Like it just what an NBC producer thinks a normal person's life is in yes. their fucking three million dollar mansion. Yes. and all their friends are doctors. <laughs> Yes, and they're always stringing lights from the garden or whatever. It's like <laughs> no human being would ever do this kind of stuff. Ugh, and um, 
the dad, like Scott, the the cancer dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the way he's looking around in that scene, he's like, I'm just relishing my family and their beautiful good time. Like everything is like this kind of super sappy sentimental song sequence like there's no nothing is in scene like it's all like kind of glossy like like commercial sort of that they're that they're populating that's a great way to put it and i noticed this this is a a note i made about three quarters of the way through i noticed i did the math on one five minute chunk 75 percent of the audio had a song playing over it Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly like what you said. It's like, you stupid idiots, here's what you're supposed to think. This is an (laughs) exciting scene. The guy's learning how to drive. It's like, thank you. Like, (laughs) It's so fucking, it's like, you would only do that if you hated every person to watch this, which these people do. It's like, you fucking moron, it's sad. The guy has cancer. Yeah. So we'll play a sad song. Like, don't you get it? It's supposed to be sad. It's like, well, maybe if it's, it isn't sad, it's because the show is, like, horrendously written. Like, there's no human being in this entire episode. No one has any <laughs> human reaction to anyone else. Yeah, so what did you what did you think about the writing in this, you know, the family's interplay between e- each other? Oh, like, I think the worst was the wife. Like, she is, I mean, I don't know, it's hard to say who's the worst, because none of them are real at all. Like, they're just kind of like cardboard cutouts going around each other. But the wife is, like, really, really bad. She's like an avatar of, like, a, like, you know, 40-year-old woman, like, serious 40-year-old woman, uh, professional, loves her family, you know, will do anything, strong mom. Like, and the way she's, like... I, I don't know, like, the way she interacts with the dad, that's when they, they come up with the Council of Dads, right, on the porch. They're, yeah, like, overseeing yeah. their, like, beautiful family and all they have. And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of doing a Council of Dads. <laughs> and she's like, uh, you're crazy. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, I think I just convinced you. And she's like, uh, oh my god, I think you did. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not. It's yeah, she has the least human qualities. Yeah, it's just like it's the type of like woman character that a a man like an RBG Funko Pop liberal man writes when he just doesn't. Yes. he doesn't actually like like or know like think about women. It's just, it's just like, yes. like, like like he's just everyone because he's uh, been in Hollywood for so long that he can make an NBC show. At yes. least, like, half the guys he knows are probably rapists. But he's yes. like, women, hey, men, uh, tip from men, if you want to learn how to do something right, listen to a woman. So they're just, like, these, like, depersonalized yes. avatars of competence and n- not human beings. Exactly. Like, she doesn't her exactly. Like, it's like, w- like... Men, let's all thank women. They can do it all. They're in charge. It's like, then why did you get three men to support her and, like, make her life work? Like, <laughs> you need, like yeah, what a wonderfully strong woman. <laughs> all right. So after the really bad family scene, uh, there's a scene where Luli is in a cancer support group. And oh, I hate this scene. <laughs> this is really shit. This part's really shitty. And yeah. he's, uh, he he's um like a, a handsome young African American character, and he sort of does like the like I guess you would call it like TikTok style flirting, where it's like, hey, oh. still thinking about me? I mean, the high school crush, where it's just sort of harmless but sort of teasing. Uh, oh. And it does nothing for me to – it does it doesn't solve the math of how old these characters are supposed to be for me at all. You're absolutely right. Like when was high school? Was it last year? Because she's like <laughs> – uh, or he's like, uh, yeah, uh, I was in your IP history class. And it, like was that 10 years ago or was it like the last fall? <laughs> <laughs> no indication because this scene – it's written like it, it's it, it may as well be like so many scenes in the show. It's like a commercial for Lexapro. That's the level yes. of flirting here. Yes. And that's what it looks like. Like visually, it looks like a commercial for Lexapro. Like the this like 
the glossy outdoor scenes and stuff like the whole show looks like a commercial like a like it looked like the medication commercials that they were advertising in between the breaks yeah i noticed that i want to talk about that later the ads that i saw for that like because oh i watch God. it on youtube tv and i assume the ads are the same for everyone who watches this show pretty much but uh, we'll i want to talk about that awesome. like three, three quarters of the way in but uh so you know that's that's Chekhov's gun. There, there's going to be there's going to be yes. like a, a cute romance that becomes very dramatic. So, yes, yes, yeah. and like because you know you're such a stupid idiot, it needs to be within the same like it, that needs to be like within the same episode. Like it could ne- like some it would never be like later. You know, it, it's yeah. Like, that would never happen. Like your your stupid brain can't hold something over the week. Like we'll just shoot the gun by the end of the episode. That's exactly yeah. That's so much happens in this episode, yes. and it's a product of how much the writers hate the audience. Yes. Because in any good show, like the plot arcs in Deadwood, some of them are like we we have to kill this guy, and some of them are like. We're trying to build a hardware store and they all take 10 episodes yes. because the, char- the characters and writing are strong enough to carry this thing throughout or like a more less prestige show like Justified. It's like, yes, they have episodic serialized stories of like there's a different villain of the week, but they're right. long running things throughout because they think they're strong enough storylines. But this is like, yeah. yo, you fucking stupid idiot. Like, fine. We'll give you the romance. We'll give you the death. We'll give you everything yes. right here. Yes. Yes. And there's like 20 big reveals. Like I'm thinking about JJ again. Like it's like anything that we would possibly need to know about these people. Like we get like a huge stupid monologue, multiple huge stupid monologues about who they are and why that matters. Like it's like another reveal, like the the, the Craig T, like the Penny Craig <laughs> T. Nelson was like in AA with him. I don't know why that's presented as this huge reveal, but like th- there's so, like every scene is like that. Like the gun shooting off. It's like you thought he was just a neighborhood crank, but he actually is in AA. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. there are no cranks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those, yeah, just completely exclusionary fields. But, um. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, Scott and Robin are in the backyard and they're talking about Charlotte. They're Wait, adopted. who's Robin? Uh, the OBGYN wife. Oh, okay. Oh, right. And Charlotte is the daughter. Do- right, right. Yeah, okay, Charlotte's yeah. the daughter. Did- oh, did I fuck that up? Did I, I say Charlotte so. was the wife? I'm sorry. Scott and Robin, who's his wife, I mistakenly said it was Charlotte. Charlotte is an adopted daughter that they have. Uh, they're talking about how Charlotte is too withdrawn, the daughter. Because in the first scene we see, I don't know what the fuck this was trying to imply, but when JJ was on the rope swing, she started talking about Anne Frank and how the Nazis will oh chase Oh, my God. JJ. I don't know what, like, was it supposed to show that she's smart or that she's obsessed with death or what? Like, that was so <laughs> fucked up. I know it's like literally like maybe the second line of dialogue was like in the Holocaust and Frank was like <laughs> chased by Nazis. It's like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that they, I because it, it's like, again, these are awful contemptuous people who make the show, but they're also really stupid and they think any yes. is just... Literally just vomiting it out like a child does. So Yes. And like that that's the book that they because of course that book comes up later, like in a beautiful scene with one of the Council of Dads and Charlotte. So it's like they're and they're the kind of people who who are like, um, you know, okay, book, book. We'll have her read a book. Uh, what's a book? Uh, uh, Catcher in the Rye? No, no. Too, too, uh, body. Uh, d- the, the Diary of Anne Frank. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you Google book, the Diary of Anne Frank comes up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so yeah, they have a, they have a, that's just wrong laugh. Where yeah. Scott's like, yeah, she's in her closet all day like Anne Frank. And then Scott's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that is her. Cl- OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Scott shows off his new leg. <laughs> they, they, they like took off his leg for cancer reasons. Now he has yeah. a new one. Yes. There's just no reason for that to happen, by the way. I think it was just to like to be like, look, you look at all, all this awful shit happening to this guy. And he still has like a, he still has a good attitude. You fucking pieces of shit. 
Exactly. Right. Like, except your lot. This guy doesn't even have a leg. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're immediately. All after- he has is a mansion and one leg. <laughs> <laughs> and a 20 yeah. person family. Yeah. More money than you could ever dream of. <laughs> no one in the. Fa- oh, he- wait, the wife works. Yeah. It doesn't seem yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So after this, we're immediately given a treat. You know, we had our veggies. <laughs> it's time for dessert. <laughs> we have a character we never see in a family melodrama comedy. We have the cool best friend slash uncle character oh. who's like a handsome, handsome, swath man with a beard. But he's like a little wacky. He like, you know, he gets with the kids. And he's like, let's go to the crab shack. Oh, OK, I know. The ki- no kind of this, this guy. This guy's got a wild side, but he's nice to kids. Oh, Look yes. out for him, though, ladies. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. We're now given an awful scene at where the entire family and their friend go to the crab shack. And, and it's called fight. crab shack. Like <laughs> yeah. we have to learn that like several times, like in the scene before. Yeah. When the wacky guy shows up and he's like, uh, you're preparing dinner. And the dad's like, I, I cook. And he's like, uh, one, two, three. And then everyone yells crab shack. And then it cuts to, A building that says in huge letters, Crab Shack on it. And then we see them sitting there and they're like, we're at the Crab Shack. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, (laughs) is this a sponsored bit or something? Like, what is this? (laughs) It's like, you know how, like, we we always, like, we were talking about American Sniper once and how it could have been a cool movie if it was like, Oh yeah, this is a guy who was really a Navy SEAL, but he lied all the time and he was a bad person. Like Yes. Like if it was like yeah, like if it was a comedy. Yes. Yeah. If this you made this show, but it was like, yeah, there's a curse on my family where we all behave like the Mythbusters. <laughs> <laughs> It would be brilliant. You're right. It would be. I have amazing. to get my family to stop behaving like the MythBusters before I die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like these people suck shit. Like- <laughs> <laughs> like they're, you know, they're really like. It's like the way that they get along so well is repulsive. Like you know the the like. It's like when he does the RBG chant, which like, you know, we'll talk about, obviously, like the the Charlotte just smiles like like warmly like this is like a 13 year old girl. And then his the rude son is like like all the like everyone in the family is so like compliant and obedient, even when their trappings are like, you know, this, this is a rude son. He's a rebel or like this is like a. Uh, Charlotte is like a girl on the edge of puberty like it doesn't you know, and she's kind she's struggling with some holocaust related issues like it, <laughs> it doesn't like none of those things like bear out in the way they like react to any anything anyone does like they're all like their only personality trait it like when in their interactions is how like compliant they are that's a great point. That's a great, like, even families where it's not like they're being ravaged by cancer, like kids are shitty and don't listen yes. to people and are just like, feel bad for seemingly no reason. Yes. Like, people, people have insane, ins- like, siblings will have like insane, like, hatreds of each other when they're kids that they grow out of. Yes. But like, it's like, there's a lot of friction. This is, this show is all, all these shows are tragedy without friction. It's so weird. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. It's like, they're just lying down and taking it. Like, yes. It's like, they don't, I mean, when the, like the son is like, like the, the rude son is like crying maturely at the, like at the dad's funeral. It's like, these aren't human. Like, and so are all the other, like, you know, it's like, it doesn't. They're, right. I mean, the lack of friction, that's such a good way of putting it. Like, these are people who, like, apparently are all in the same family together, and they're not relating to each other at all in any way. Like, they're not relating to each other in a way that anyone wouldn't just, like, standardly relate to anyone. Like, they, they have, yeah. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, they have no special understanding of each other. Like, that's why. Family dynamics are right for drama because it's the only way in which incredibly different people will can relate to each other past even what like a friend or like a romantic partner can. 
And there's yes. none of that here. They're like co-workers yes. who like each other. Oh my God, exactly. Like me and Sam were talking about that. I was like, you know, you and Sam, like you, like you Felix and Sam have more, like you have like a Cuomo brothers dynamic. And like me and you have more like a, like a, we're like more similar. Like we don't have like a, I don't know. Like it's just like each of us like relates very differently to each other, you know? And yeah. Sam and I are like similar because we like, you know, like we're like similar and different to each other in such a like wide and interesting variety of different ways. Like, wouldn't there be like, I mean, the first thing that the wait, what is what's the um oh, Luli, the first thing that Luli says to us, like in her weird narration that never comes back until the very end. She's like, Charlotte's adopted. Like, is, is there <laughs> tension? That, like, why is she telling us that? Like, you know, like, so Charlotte's adopted and she's from another mother. Would they have some kind of like would would wouldn't that influence their relationship in some way? I don't know how, but like I don't I never even see them interact in any way. No, no, never, never, because they're just, it's like it's almost like they work in different divisions of the company that is the family. It is so much like a company like that's exactly what it's like. You're right. Oh, God. OK, yeah. So at the Crab Shack. We find out that Luli turned down a fancy internship in New York to take care of of uh, Scott, and she actually works at the Crab Shack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she works at the. She that's how we know she's a good. She took a low normal person's job instead of, you know, writing articles that are like, uh, would Bernie Sanders have opposed World War Two? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we also learn we learn like that the swag best friend is a restaurateur that's yeah. what we learned Wait a minute. did the new yorker call, like why is she like we she did she get the call from the new yorker or not like how do we know it's never like it's never explained i almost think that like the time moving forward thing is a function of them like they did like a bad print job of the script there's an missing yes. pages this yes. should have been like 10 episodes yes i mean there is so much in here like I, that didn't even cross my mind like and that was like the same season or whatever like you know she's just gonna move to new york without having heard from the new yorker like oh i'm sure i was accepted <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah uh, scott scott says to her like you need to chase your dreams of going to new york to become a writer uh and i th- that just that was very revealing because it's like that's what the children of the producers in the show are doing yes yes they're like oh it's the it's like a noble profession for the public right right thank you so much for like right writing blog posts for um like refinery 29 like that's beautiful like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no I, I i i this literally just made me realize i think that the push for us to respect journalists like we were supposed to respect troops in 2001. It's because it's because it's like the only job that the children of Hollywood sickos can do. Yes. It's like they're too, they're, they don't work hard enough to like become doctors or anything. And this is it's the only thing they can do. So Hollywood sickos are like, yeah, actually my children are heroes. That is so true. Like you don't understand. They're going to work like four days a week. It's really hard. <laughs> and they have to like go outside and talk to people. Like it's amazing what they're doing. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So the daughter like in one of the most insane snap turnarounds, like the the daughter's like, No, Dad, I wanna watch you die. <laughs> and uh, yes. but uh, she gets five steps out, then turns around 180 degrees and goes do you feel like I sidetracked your life? Oh my God. And, yes. And the dad goes, no, I'm so glad I had you and that your mother left and that I have my unconventional life. Yes. Like, <laughs> I mean, and it's, you're right. That, that um conversation is like really weird. Like she's like, for some reason, even though like, She's like presenting herself to us as like an outsider in the family. And then she presents herself like that to her dad. And 
But yet, you know, when we interpret her as an outsider in the family, that means that we're racist. Like, I don't know. There's something really <laughs> gross going on there. Like, she is like she's the narrator of it. She and she's like, you know, how did I get to be a part of this family? I'll tell you. It's like, well, you know, why are you assuming I wouldn't think you're part of this family? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't, well, that yeah, I think that's the key to this being written by like very old people because like if you saw like. You, you know, if they had like done better job with the wardrobe, we would have picked up immediately that this was the daughter, and yeah. that like and Scott's her dad. We'd be like, oh yeah, like the mom was black or she's adopted or something. But it's like because like a sixty two year old who the white guy writes this who like thinks he's just at the forefront of progressive politics because he reads the root. He's like, all right, you're probably thinking this is just a homeless woman who's tricking his family, right? <laughs> You know what? In retrospect, like my first thought when she was sitting on the steps, like, you know, smugly uh, watching the family, um, I actually before I thought that he was her new like that she was his new wife. I actually thought that she was their baby. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's well, yeah, not yeah, my it has fault. Nothing to- it has nothing to do with the race. It's like no. she's sitting fifty feet yes. away from the family, and she's like not old enough to be their mom or really his wife, but not young enough to be part of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was definitely what I first thought. Like, and right, it's not my fault. Why did you? Pre- they presented. <laughs> they visually presented her as the babysitter. Yeah, literally. Yeah, you yes. have no fucking idea. It's like this is a show you have to read Wikipedia to figure out. Yes, right? uh, yes, <laughs> yes, completely. <laughs> yeah, but um, all right. So also, it's Christmas, uh, and we know this because the QAnon family friend comes oh, right. in with a Christmas tree. And again, like you know, if you wanted to make this a show about like actual human friction and how like people of very different things come together like i'm sure there was a reason that he barges in with a christmas tree like there there should have been something that's like you know oh like trump made it okay for it to be christmas again like i don't <laughs> like i don't give a shit if your family's unitarian we're celebrating it but like right because this is a completely defanged frictionless thing it's just like this completely silent old man gives him a Christmas tree, and that's the end of the scene. He, compl- he doesn't say a word. And in fact, you're like, who is that guy? Even though, like, it, like it's so, like, shoddily done, because the first time you see him, everyone's like, wait, who is that old man? He, like, forges in with the Christmas tree and runs out. Like, you think he's sort of like a Boo Radley figure or something. But then later you find out he's, like, integral in the family like like in in the family like fabric and i like you you wouldn't have known that in the first scene because they're like there's that weird old man again and then you see him again and they're like we love you (laughs) 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 yeah yeah in the plot that moves around like by years what was like was there a scene where he like like <laughs> help them fix a gun or something like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the next part the the day I, this is why i think there was a thing that someone wrote that was like you know we're celebrating christmas again because the next scene is this terrible thing where scott's giving charlotte some soy speech about not vaping and he goes ruth bader ginsburg wouldn't <sighs> vape and he leaves the room chanting rbg <sighs> and it's like First of all, they should allow you to apply for a Taliban membership via <laughs> Roku. That's what I wanted during this scene. <laughs> I know. And that was like the compliance, like docility of the children was like so evident in that scene because he's like walking around like a fucking buffoon being like, oh, RBG, RBG. And the 13 year old daughter just like smiles. She doesn't even smile indulgently. Like she just smiles. Like, yeah, that's not a human response to like this doofy father being like, oh, BG, RB. <laughs> like, it, that's not like no one would do that. Like, yeah, like I'm like, I can't even imagine the viewer, like any like person who is a fan of the show being like, cool, like that was repulsive. His behavior was repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> you need to write an apology. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the NBC people like RBG so much because she's been dying for like 15 years. Oh my god, you're right. She's like, I, I broke my rib. 
<laughs> All right. So um, when he it. chanted that, that's probably when the cancer came back. <laughs> 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 All right, so at dinner, Scott continues to be incredibly fucking irritating oh. and gives his li- kids, like, quick, quick, like, shitty 30-second life lessons. And Charlotte, very subtle, like, this is subtle writing, and yeah. this is what a mom would do to a dad to, with health scares. He goes, Scott, you're going oh. to be here for a very long time. Your daughters are going to need you. you you're not dying. Oh. And he was like. Oh, oh no, I, it's not Charlotte Robbins. Robin, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and, 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 um, um, Scott is like, uh, daughters? And she's like, <laughs> I, I'm pregnant with a girl. Okay. It's, this is the scene that Michael, um, Michael sent me. Wait, Wait. is this when they're standing in front of the mirror? Yeah, so we get the most insane fucking scene ever written here. Uh, this is the scene that got me to watch this show, the scene in front of the mirror. Oh, and it's like, uh, again, like, visu- it's like ins- visually insulting. Like, how many times have I seen, like, a shitty thing of, like, the husbands holding the wife in front of the mirror and they're talking to each other in the mirror? Like, no human being in real life has ever done that. Hey. Jada said you were throwing up. Are you sick? Um, well, you remember all that life-affirming sex we had when you were first diagnosed? Yeah. We had affirmed life. I'm pregnant. Uh, Things were just so crazy after you got diagnosed, I think I probably forgot a few pills. Sorry, love. (laughs) I'm sorry that I didn't catch your cancer. I'm a doctor. And you might have been limping and I just missed it. I hate that some stupid blood test that you took for insurance caught it and I didn't. I'm just sorry. Hey, me getting cancer isn't your fault, okay? (sighs) It isn't your fault at all. You being pregnant isn't good news. It's the best news. Yeah. (laughs) We're gonna have a baby. (laughs) We're gonna have five kids. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, you are now married with a kid. (laughs) Yes, right. Brian have never done this. No. All right, so I'm just going to I'm going to save the URL for the scene and I'm just going to put it because there's no way either of us could describe this that does it justice. Absolutely. It's the worst scene ever recorded. <laughs> it's <laughs> she's like I'm a doctor. First of all, he knows that. He's your fucking husband and she's like I should have found your cancer. Like with what? Like our home cat scan stuff? Like <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Holy shit, it's so bad. It it's, it's so horrible. Fucking shitty. Oh my god. I the part so that life affirming sex, it was oh. life affirming. Like it's so, oh. f- and then he's wearing oh. like he's in his house and he's wearing like a skull cap. Oh like wouldn't God. he just like have his bald hair in that like bald head in the house? Right. right. Everything about this is so fucking unnerving. It's yeah, so fu- it's like a Cthulhu thing where you lose sanity <laughs> and can't play the game anymore. Holy shit, I fucking hate it. But okay, thankfully, like. After this is the most insane thing that's ever been on TV, but uh, yes. after that, they're in their backyard. Uh, and you know why does the baby need a council of dads? But like, I mean, so the the baby, the the existence of the baby means that there needs to be a council of dads. What about the other kids? Yeah. Well. Oh no. But they. I, oh, the yeah, council. Like, the council like, of dads notion precedes the baby. Does it? Yeah. No, no, no. It's after the ba- it's like after after like they have the like shitty dinner scene and RBG scene. He's like that's right. When Scott, Scott that's when like, he comes. Uh, in. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen. I use that term loosely. Are gonna raise my kids. 
But oh. I, I like it. But it was like a weird. It was like a means testing thing. It was like a trigger point. It's like you're on your own with with my family after I die. But now that you have a new kid. And like, yes. God forbid you get a fucking abortion. Like you, <laughs> you have so many kids right. and your husband's going to die. Like, yeah, God forbid. Right. Like, and you're a doctor. You're a do- like, this is a fucking disaster. Like, yeah. yes, yes. And right. And so then wait to what happens. Yeah, because like an abortion, even for the fucking libs that write the shore, like God forbid any like an abortion is just a thing of last resort. No, like good woman would do that. Yes, like instead you need to like like jerry rig this like system of three men to look after this girl. Like this is a mess. Like you're completely <laughs> right. Like I don't like her life. Like you know she's the strong one. Like her life is inconceivable. Okay, they have tons of kids. Like I can't. E- I don't even know how many. I don't know what their <laughs> names are. I don't know how they got them or like what the fuck is going on. They live in a gigantic mansion. They seem to have no like help with the house. They. She is a full time like. I guess obstetrician. Like this. Wait. Is she, yeah, she is. Right. Yeah. She's. She's a. Is that right? Like she. Deli- yeah, she delivers babies. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, so she's a full time obstetrician. It doesn't seem like any of her family lives in the area or anything. Like this is a <laughs> fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's just insane. Like there. This is like this is a family from like a New York Times trend piece of people who like the moment the economy turns out, they're like, yeah, whoops, we're seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. Yes, 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 completely. But so. Uh, Robin, like similar to Mary Queen of Scots, like usurps him. She, she becomes the head of the Council of Dads. Um, <laughs> but later, next scene, Luli and the guy from Cancer Club are hanging out, and also there's a yeah. sign in the room that literally says Cancer Club. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they, yeah, they don't want. It's so the choices they make are so weird because it's like this is one of the actual things you could infer like, oh, this is a cancer support yes. group because that's in the dialogue. But they beat you over the head with that. But with everything else, it's like, why is there just like multiple scenes with this surly, <laughs> completely silent old man that isn't explained for like 40 minutes until it is? It's just like what they think you deserve to know and don't is so yes. illustrating. Yeah, it's like okay, for some reason they need to label this room. But yeah, <laughs> it's like like a, like kind of ha- strange haunting figure bursts into their house with <laughs> the Christmas tree and runs out. Like <laughs> 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 so yeah, they're having another they're having a terrible scene in their beachfront paradise. And he <laughs> goes, I th- I'm falling in love with you. And she goes, just stop talking to me. I, and that's the end of the scene. That scene is so confusing because her response is, she doesn't just say like, no, you know, no thanks or something, whatever. She like, I had no idea how to read her reaction because she was like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, no. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I uh, know. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. is, is so? Am I supposed to think that she's saying she loves him also, or is she breaking up with him? And she, then she was like, she had that like disgusting line that like it, it's like there were so many lines in here that were like the stock photo version of lines. Like she was like, can we just be quiet together for a while? Like it's something no one has ever said. You know, let's just not talk. And so then they just like, I guess, like snuggle up against each other. And like, apparently she's just like horribly rejected him. But he's like, yeah, like <laughs> really yeah, weird just, scene. It's like if that if it's that inconclusive, you might as well not just have it. Yes. Like, it, yeah, like there's no point. Yes. Uh, so our next, our, we're finally. Oh, my God. I, I thought of another thing. She's in the, she's again in the babysitter's position. Like the whole family is having like this party and she's like in the back. Yeah. She's never like, inter. she never has any interaction with the family. And again, no. like, if this was a better shitty show, it would have been like, there would be like. There's like some racial character to this where it's like, yeah, I like sometimes like I don't feel like part of the family. Like That's the thing you could explore. They would explore it horribly because they can't do anything right. Right. But it would like at least be something. But instead they just like 
they forget to write her lines and they're like, oh, uh, no, you're in this scene, but just like mill around <laughs> blurry <laughs> background. On the perimeter. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't approach the family <laughs> <laughs> that you love and are a huge part of. <laughs> yeah. That you love so much that you, it's your job to narrate them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you never seem to, you're just like out there. Um, so our next awful scene, uh, it's Larry, the old man and Theo. And yeah, and Theo's like, like the cool, the like rebel. Yeah, he's like he's the one who's pissed, right? Even even though he's completely compliant, yes, and like nice and fine. It's just like he just gets mad sometimes. But like again, if this was a better show, like Larry would not really be teaching him how to drive, like not giving him good advice. But he'd be like, and you know, Chrissy Teigen posted the <laughs> other day on Twitter about how her flight got redirected. You know what that is? She's uh, the federal marshal's got her for pedophilia. <laughs> and JFK Jr. faked his own death with Donald Trump in 1999. Donald Trump's been working against these people <laughs> forever. And the pedophiles run the world, but their time's over. <laughs> and Theo would be like, whoa, really? But, yeah, or he uh, might be like, you know, like stealing like drugs from the guy's pocket or something. Is he stealing <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be, t- yeah, he'd be like, you know, the Chinese invented global warming and he'd just be <laughs> ripping, just fucking ripping propanol out and thinking yes. he'd get some high. Yes. <laughs> uh, they, like, he's doing a bad job, right? Larry's very stern. Like, Larry's an asshole. And Larry, this is when we find out, like, after they have an argument where Theo's like, just stop it! Uh, <laughs> that Larry is two things. He's a non-specific businessman. Oh my you know, god, you're right. So now you know it's good to like him because he's successful. Right, he's contributing uh, to society. He's not right. Yeah, he's not just like an old leech. Uh, right, the Christmas tree wasn't the only thing he contributed to society. <laughs> yeah, he also contributed yeah. a business. <laughs> yeah, just he's like, I'm a businessman. I know what works and what doesn't. You're you're sad because your dad has cancer. And it's like. Wow, I've just really, you guys really lucked out with the family friends. Nothing eludes them. That's great. <laughs> and he's also like, I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous with Scott. And and the boy's like, what? That's <laughs> wonderful. I had no idea. It's like, yeah, like a, like a 15 year old would be like, oh my God, you're in recovery. Yeah. It, oh my God. It was so fucking stupid. It, right. And it's like, why have the family like just compliantly accepted this weird man whose name they barely know for an untold period of years? <laughs> like, <laughs> why can't the dad, right? Why couldn't the, da- the guy say your dad is my sponsor? Yeah, like the dad, like, would they notice their dad never drinks? Yeah. It has, like, some, like, what would be more alarming? Your dad being like, yeah, I used to have a problem with alcohol and now I don't drink anymore and I'm part of this thing. Uh, this is my friend Ford. Or just be like, oh, yeah, no, this old, this <laughs> fucking, this completely moribund old man <laughs> is going to come by every day and not talk to you, but give us Christmas trees. I know. Like, why was it? Why would that have been a reveal? Like, I do, I really don't understand, it, especially if they're going to do this like funky patchwork family thing. Like, yeah, I, it's so insane to me. It's just like maybe it should have been at the start of the show, but they wanted to have this scene where Larry. So Larry's like, I run laps around the parking lot because you're mad. And Theo screams and it's like, okay, good. He's done with his grief. Yes, that's right. He's fine. That's now. it. Yeah. The only time, the, the subtext here, the only time you should ever feel rage is when someone gives you permission. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like the, right. You're right. The boy is like, like he's so compliant. It actually, it seems like pathological or something. And he's the rebel. And so in that scene, the the guy's like teaching him how to drive, which again, like, wouldn't you be like, why, who is this man? And why is he teaching me how to drive? Like, who, you know? And so he like, um, the thing that the boy does that's really bad is he hits on the brakes. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's like, that's the completely unacceptable thing. Right. It's like, no, you're supposed to go slowly around the parking lot. And he like slams on the brakes. It's like, what a cool dude. Like we really (laughs) got a rebel on our hands. Yeah, that part, that part's awful. Yeah. And also, like, Larry should be, there should be, like, a B-plot where Larry's training Theo, the cool son, to murder David Hogg. 
oh my god, you're right. <laughs> That's what the real guy would yes, be doing. You're absolutely right. It's like, son, we got the ammunition in the back of this truck. Like, <laughs> we'll tell your family we're teaching <laughs> we're done teaching you how to drive. Like, I know why you're I know why you're angry, son. Yo, oh my the god. N- <laughs> the NWO and the Deep State are trying to take away our rights. <laughs> Oh my god! And we got all these crisis actors <laughs> just about your age. Like, oh my god, it would be like a kind of DC sniper situation where, like, the Yo, guy, like, I would love <laughs> that. <laughs> and like, everyone's like, wait, how are these two? Like, how did they meet each other? Like, yeah, it would be exactly like that. Like, oh, that would have been so. That what a missed opportunity. But like, because the people who write the show, just everyone's life is expendable to them. Yes, that would have been like, oh, what, like. If they, if in this episode, they would have fit it in this episode somehow, that they did a DC sniper string of spree killings, <laughs> Scott would be like, um, what did you do with my car? <laughs> uh, you did what? <laughs> Theo, you're beyond grounded. <laughs> <laughs> They've killed like 12 people. <laughs> yeah, that's, ex- oh my God, that's exactly how they talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it would be easier for you to count the number, the numbers of days until college till you're not grounded. (laughs) Just like there's just some fucking insane manifesto out there that they wrote. (laughs) (laughs) Completely. Yes. Okay. So we're like, thankfully done with the bad truck scene. Uh, but we're, we're back, we're back in the hospital. Oh, finally, where this show really comes alive. Yeah. And so they gave Scott Adivan. Which causes him to act even more annoying and toy. <laughs> and he's like telling everyone he loves them. And he's and like, e- right, he turns to the nurse and he's like, I don't know you, but I love you too. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I fucking hated this part so much. Me too. So Robin is there with Oliver, who is his cancer doctor, and Robin's his best friend from middle school. And there's like a really fucking weird line where Robin. Uh, she refers to when Oliver was straight in medical school and tried to kiss her. That seemed like kind of fucked up to me. I completely agree. Like that was incredible. And you know, another thing, like Oliver talks about his husband and his family a few times and we never see them for some reason. Like, I know that's supposed to make us feel like really hard. Like, you know, Oh, you know, even like, he's gay and he has, you know, we think it's wonderful that he's gay and he has this family too, but he's somehow invited and compliantly enthusiastic to join this other family instead. The council of yeah. friends. It's like, what about your own family? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally like, all right, well you have a gay family and that's like, yes, everyone. yes. Then they do. That's right. It's like, and th- that's, they lead us to think that and then punish us for, or like, you know, we're not as liberal as these RVG lovers. It's like, no, what you're presenting us with is inhumanizing to these characters. Yeah, no, everyone is just, there are no human characters in this. Everyone is just like a vector for tragedy yes. and positivity yes. you, and the message that you should never feel rage or anger. It's all dirty. Yes. Or they're just like a vector for you to feel good about yourself for accepting this character that has no human qualities or frictions. Right, exactly. Yes, yes. So, um... That, like, while they're having this terrible conversation, Robin immediately starts giving birth. (laughs) That was insane. Like, you know, I'm very sensitive to this because I gave birth seven weeks ago. And, like, this isn't exclusive to this show. But the thing of, like, women being like, oh, my water broke. I'm giving birth. It's like, that's not how it happens at all. (laughs) Like, it's like, (laughs) like your water breaks, like somewhere along the line, like not like, it's just like, it it really, really does. It like breaks somewhere along the line. And then like 17 hours later, you give birth. Like, it's not like that at all. I never knew that, but that shouldn't surprise me that they've just got this. Well, I guess like no screenwriter has ever been there when his wife gave birth. Yes. They're hanging out with Brian Singer. Completely. <laughs> They're not there. Yes, completely. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like the way, I mean, you know, like I'm really like, 
ugh, like the way the whole pregnancy was depicted. And like, you know, there's, I don't think I've never seen like a filmic or even like literary depiction of like what it's actually like. But this stuff of like, where you just like slyly drop to your husband that you're pregnant or like what sex the baby is. Like those are things that like you would have a conversation with the person who you're going to be raising this child about. Like why I don't like and I guess that's like the strong woman thing. Like, you know, she's got it. But like this man isn't he's also supposed to raise the child with you. Why are you like, uh, yeah, uh, we're having a baby girl. It's like, how long have you been <laughs> pregnant for? Like, when did you? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's yeah. So the we were not treated immediately to a birth scene. We've got to wait for that because we're uh, we're back with Luli and oh. the, the grief guy. And she's like. I can't be in love with you. I'm just doing a temporary thing while my dad has cancer. They use a disgusting uh, phrase that I'd never heard before. I don't know if it's made just for the show or if that's something people say on TikTok. Do you remember? No. What is it? He's like, so I guess I'm just your brief buddy. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. That really sucks. That really fucking sucks. I know. And it comes up again later. He says it again, or she's. I think she says it again. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. So it's fucking horrible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just give us that like little sprinkling of shit, but yeah. we're back in the hospital. Right. It's just uh, very short. Right. Yeah. Just a very short shitty scene. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they had the baby. It's a girl. Scott probably is going to name her like RBG, the Persister Orange Man <laughs> Slayer Chuckle Fuck Assassin Wonder Woman. <laughs> Uh, and, it, and Scott Lee, he leaves for some reason. Oh my God. Okay. Again, <laughs> like, and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to go away the baby. Like the baby that's, the, I mean, obviously like they're not going to do like any kind of realistic birth scene, but like, why was he bringing the baby to be weighed? Like the baby, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, a just a guy from outside yes, yes. who hasn't been sterilized or yes. anything. Yes. Like, that's terrible. Like, the baby, like, has no immune system. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that leaves Scott, or that leaves Oliver and uh, Robin alone. And Oliver's like, uh, uh, yeah, don't get too attached to your husband. <laughs> He's going to die. <laughs> and she was like, and after he said that, she's like, Oliver, I know you really well, even though you're gay. And black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> like, I, um, you know, I can tell when something's wrong. And he's like, yeah, your husband, uh, it's curtains for him. Like, again, huge <laughs> HIPAA violation. <laughs> yeah, massive. Everyone in this show would be fired. Yes. Like, all the, like, Larry would be fired from his job as, like, what, like, private equity guy? Because he literally... <laughs> He can't say a word to anyone, apparently, until, like, a, a boy yells at him. Yes. That's, like, his trigger. That's, like, he's, like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I can come alive. Yeah. Uh, Scott is just, like, the most annoying fucking man ever. Yes, I don't know any is. job he could work at. No. Uh, the <laughs> restaurateur brother, like, his thing is just, like, getting pussy and being cool. <laughs> yes. So I guess he could Even work Even though that's just chef. implied. Like, we don't... It's just implied, yeah. yeah. And, in fact, no one who's not in this family is in the show. The only people we see are people in the family. Like, if you include the Council of Dads. Like, the hospital is completely staffed by the family. The Crab Shack <laughs> literally is, sta is only staffed by the family. Like, there is no one who appears at all in the show. Like, these people have no friends. They don't know anyone. Like, they're all it's only the family. No, yeah, that's... Yeah, I never thought about that. But it, they're literally the population of this entire town. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like it's like a when you have a dream where you're like, oh, I, like I'm at Costco, but everyone who works there is like, 
you know, it's like my cousin, yes. my uncle. Yes. Oh my <laughs> Those god. Those are the, the only faces that you can quite recall at that moment. Oh my god. Exactly. Yes. 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 That's right. It's like I mean, it must be the same reason. Like you do it in the dream that they did in the show. Like your imagination can't come up with anything except for these like <laughs> familiar people, and that's what they're doing. They can't like staff the show with enough people. Like. And then- but it is also like, well, that isn't for lack of money. Like, the show has very high production it values. Really does. They could have hired extras, but they were just like, no, this is just, this is the family company. Um, <laughs> we don't want to confuse the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> they might not have very good facial recognition. I actually didn't <laughs> recognize the dad when he had cancer. Like, I thought he was a new character. <laughs> so I guess I am their perfect viewer. <laughs> Who's that? He's bald now. <laughs> you forgot? <laughs> so after that, uh, Luli and the guy, Luli's like, all right, well, you're more than a grief buddy. Ugh. Is that, is that what she said? Yeah. Yeah. I, I expected both of them to be like, I'm dying at this point. Me, like, why yes. not just give both of them cancer? She runs into the fucking sea in a scene that's like, this oh. is like if Ter- Terrence Malick <laughs> was like, like dropped as an adult. <laughs> it's like a really bad parents mouth. It's yeah. It's like a fucking, you know, those like really fancy high schools that are film classes. If you were like, yeah, just have a 15 year old do a fucking Malik scene with full production. Oh movie. my God. That's exactly what, wait, that like, I've been part of one of those. Like I was taking a walk one day, like in Beachwood, which is this like really fancy suburb of Cleveland. And these two wonderful teens stopped me and they were like, and it was like a really snowy day. And it was like down this like kind of like path that you'd see in like something like this. And they're like, could you, um, like and they had these like really fancy cameras and they're like could you walk slowly away from us and i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and i like had it was like a heartwarming scene i was like you know good luck with your future guys like i'm sure everything will be great and they're like thanks ma'am like yeah like that they could have shot like if they were in georgia or wherever this takes place like they would have shot that like w- the woman running toward the water and you know wonderfully freely jumping in and him chasing after her like yeah 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 they probably would have done a better job but um yeah in the water she's like my dad died this morning oh. and then the scene just ends it's fucking awful you're right he, so- he doesn't say it like it's like <laughs> these kinds of people have no friends I and mean, if someone was like you know my dad died this morning they just like stare at them blankly, <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah yeah they've lived in la too long and are just used to the style of conversation where you stare at someone till they're done talking <laughs> All right, is it my turn? Is it my turn? <laughs> my, yeah, it's like they respond by being like, my dad is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're right, they couldn't fuck. write, they couldn't think of anything to write for him to say, so the scene just ends. No, yeah, they're like, all right, we're out of the scene. So yeah. we're thankfully, like, we're thankfully in the last quarter of this, so... It just ramps up to get worse as it ends yes. up. Because- and, right. And as I, well, yeah, like, as I told you, like, that scene is like, an, like, it's like a relief. Like, that, I mean, the way that they've set this up, because you know there's going to be a Council of Dads, you're like rooting for his cancer to come back. Then you're rooting <laughs> for him to die. Like, it's so evil. Like, but there, it's like, well, you need this plot, need, you know, this Council of Dads needs to be set up. Like, wh- like you know, it's horrible. Like, like, with every character they put you in like a disgusting position no yeah well yeah and it is the nbc theory that all all tragedy i mean like okay you take like the misattributed stalin quote a million deaths is a statistic the nbc quote would be any any tragedy is just a plot device yeah tragedy is just something that happens that you put into your character and it's like just annoying, supposedly funny lines come out. Yes. It's like I can't think of anything else to do. So this guy died of cancer. Like I can't think yeah. of any way to make these people seem human except for through through illness and sickness. Yeah. No, it's the only way they can characterize people. Yes. But 
So he writes these, he writes like these awful letters thanking the Council of Dads, the future Council of Dads. And I thought it'd be funny if his letter to Oliver was like, well, good work, but I'm dying now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the least useful of the council. <laughs> you were the only one tasked with keeping me from dying from cancer and you screwed it up, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Like, oh god. And it's so, like, I they can't think, they couldn't think of another character to be his doctor. The doctor had to be his best friend and on the Council of Dads. <laughs> yeah, this is, this, like, this family wouldn't pass, like, an annulments clause investigation. <laughs> way too many conflicts. Of you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, um. Right, so we let, wrote each dad a letter. Yeah. So they're supposed to look after the family for at least a year, which like what like after a year, like a baby, you've no issues with baby. It's like, all right, they can pretty much take care of themselves after that. But uh Yeah, we so we're treated to The baby is off- growing very fast. Another thing I noticed it like three months later the baby was like <laughs> somehow was lo- about the size of a one year old baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe they like microwaved it or something. <laughs> but uh, we get we're treated to individual scenes of the council meeting with their individual member of the family. Like we get Oliver. He he talks about Anne Frank with Charlotte in a horrible name. Larry keeps continuing to groom Theo. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's like dressing him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just. Garbage shit like that. <laughs> so, all right, coming up. Wait, this it's is almost like wait that Larry and Theo thing is incredibly sinister. Like they, their, their scene is a re- visual recreation of the worst scene, the scene that Michael shared with you of the wife and husband sitting standing in front of the mirror. Like he's doing that with Theo. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! Like he has his like <laughs> arms around him and it's tied the time they're both facing the mirror. Oh my fucking god, I didn't even think about that. Oh, this show's so fucking dark. <laughs> Brian Singer probably produced it. Holy shit. I can't wait to see how their relationship develops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just the teaser for the next scene. I never asked you to become a part of my life, Theo. <laughs> I just liked you. <laughs> All right, so and Theo's now- just like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like uh, blankly compliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so after that, there are a lot of there are like four scenes I could say contend for the worst scene in the yes. show and this is the last of those scenes so during the scene funeral scene we find out that jj is a trans boy and this isn't done with like just zero fucking care for trans people it's not that they think like yes. this is an interesting character it's not yes. that like oh we're gonna like we're gonna talk about like how a family would w- w- would take on like you know the challenge and joy of this mm-hmm. it's just like mm-hmm. The grandma makes it makes him wear a dress, and then every character gives a speech about why she shouldn't have. Yeah, it's just like it's just a, ra- a way for the writers to show how good they are. This yes. like every identity is just a fucking prop. Yes, it's so fucking insulting. It is. It's so goddamn fucking insulting. It is so fucking insulting. And like, so then when we find out what their their special identity is, quote unquote, that's all they are and will ever be. Like, that's the end of their trajectory as a character. It's like so gross. And I that scene was especially offensive to me because that was the mom from Freaks and Geeks. I'm like, what? you don't have to do what this. What a misuse! What a fucking misuse of an amazing talent. Yes! Like, you, like she didn't have to do that. Like, Ugh! Right. So, and then, uh, right, and um, JJ gives a like, a, the, like a really gross speech. Sure, he's like, you know, it's okay, Grandma. I know you're from a different generation, and you just don't understand. Like, I mean, their reactions. It's like they have to be good to for us to see to want to follow their plot line or something like right, right. exactly exactly no one on the show has had like your grandmother is like misgendering you and making you do like one of the most at your own father's funeral at your father's funeral in front of your entire fucking family yes. 
and, but because like the writers have to show that you're morally perfect yes. and would never display any rage because this is the dirtiest thing you can display. Yes, yes. Just any anger, or fucking discomfort. You have to be Jesus Christ all the time. Yes. That's what every normal person to them, that's like what every normal person has to be to have any rights. Yes. God forbid they angrily demand the human dignity to which they're entitled to. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's like, right, the um like generic Craig T. Nelson didn't give the give JJ permission to scream in the parking lot. So instead he's just going to be politely compliant and go along with it. And he looks terrible in that dress. It's like I, I didn't even <laughs> know what was happening. I thought it was like she was dressing him for like some kind of communion thing or something. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, it was poorly like again, horribly done, horribly introduced, horribly Fucking everything. Yes. Like, eh, but this was just like the other scenes are horrible because they're poorly written and poorly executed. This is horrible because it's like insulting. Yes. To like a lot of people. Yes. But and you know JJ is a very unpleasant character. And then, <laughs> like, and it, then you it like and it has nothing to do with his identity. Right. It's just like because the writers are bad. Yes. Yeah. Like and he's always like you know in weird places in the house like you know one of those kind of kids like and, then, <laughs> and like you know like in a funky position on the landing or whatever you know like just yucky stuff and then and th- right, and then it's like, oh, you hated him. Well, he's a really wonderful kid who's you know dealing like in a extremely like perfect way with being trans. Like, so you suck. It's like I didn't yeah. know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Luli, in the awful end of this awful awful pilot, yes, Luli gets mas- married to her cancer homie with the help of the soy <laughs> Illuminati. Um. They, like, do their wedding. I guess we flash forward, like, what, like, five years? No, it's a three months later. And, like... What the fuck? I know. And just like you, I was thinking she was, like, 15. Because the dad said, you know, um, I, you know, I'm worried about this relationship. Oh, my God, wait. We didn't talk about the song that they sang together when they first met. Like... Holy fuck. I literally had... I think I, like... I blacked out during that part <laughs> that was describe it please please describe okay. it there's okay and this is so, like this is so racist i don't even know there's <laughs> sta- i mean but it's like racist in a way yeah. that like you would have to have like i don't even know what i mean it's like I, okay they're standing against a brick wall and he spontaneously begins, and he's done a graffiti of a crab. <laughs> and, and I, I think Holy it's on fuck, the crab I, check. It's like oh a corporate God. corporate graffiti that he voluntarily did for free on the, and then she, I don't, I can't even, it's like I, my mind couldn't even make sense of what I was seeing. Like, I think this is supposed to be a realistic show. You know, they're trying to make it realistic. He but just spontaneously begins to, like, kind of do a, like, Kid Rock-style rap. Like, <laughs> and then she joins in and, and finishes out the rap. And I think that's when the dad becomes, um like concerned about her future because you know they're doing street stuff like so he's like you know i'm worried about you and like it's like this weird like i mean their their song is like something that would be on sesame street like that's like the kind of tone of it like they're in front of like of this fake brick what kind of suburban yes street style brick wall and they're doing like a i and i don't know what the rap is i was too mortified to listen to the words of it but i think it was something like hey girl girl, I'm into you. Girl, are you into me? Like something a little bit like that. And she's like, hey, brother, happy to see that you are into me. Like it was that kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. It was that fucking shitty. It was, yeah, it was like 1983 style. Yes, yes. Yeah, and they were both doing like little moves. Like... Right, and I don't know, was that to show that, I don't know, that they're not, maybe not from the community or something, but everyone, like, accepts them anyway. And that was right before the conversation that she had with the dad, where she was like, did I ruin your life, dad? Like, you would have ruined anyone's life who saw what just happened. I, yeah, I can't believe I forgot about that. Actually, I can. No, some things you just, like, can't. (laughs) 
keep in your mind. No. Or too painful. So, but, okay, so wait, the whole the reason I brought up that scene was she said to the dad after that, you know, I kiss a guy and you flip. Like, so it's like, to me that, you know, it's not like she's sleeping with him. She's just doing like, you know, urban style, you know, <laughs> things with him. And that was him. probably what was in the script. Like when they were blocking the scene <laughs> out, they were like, you know, uh, uh, Luli and the guy do an urban style mating, courting ritual, <laughs> <Yes>. hip hop style, <laughs> romanticism. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Like the all white writers room did. Yes, completely. You're right. It was like urban style mating ritual. Completely. Yes. Oh God, that was so mortifying. Right, and the and the dad walked in on them doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. yeah. Right. Oh God. Oh my God. I am really glad you remember that because that like adds so much subtext to like, did I ruin your life? Like, <laughs> is it like oh. You introduced an urban yes. element to this family. Yes. Like, is that what we're supposed to read it? Like, what the right. fuck? That's why you, we have you stand 500 feet back from the family at all social functions. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So when she was like, you know, I kissed a guy. What's the big deal? Um, uh, that made me think like, okay, this girl is, you know, 15 years old. But, yeah. uh, but she gets married, I think, about three months after that scene. So she's like 21. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, God damn it. This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea for a marriage. You've just known this guy for like five months and you get married just out of grief. Right. Right. What a fucking great. I that is like there's a lot of contempt for normal people and the people who view the show. But that is probably the biggest. That's like very subtly the biggest fuck you. Because it's like if you the message of this show and the message of like all these shows and all this like kind of culture, this cult of positivity yes, is that it's absolutely filthy and disgusting to feel any anger at the state of the world, any ambient shittiness you feel. It's not that you live in a country where people fucking kill themselves because they, they can't afford healthcare. They do murder suicides, husbands and wife. They're afraid there'll be burdens on their family yeah. that we, that we fund terrorist militias all over the world and destabilize anything good that happens. Yeah. Just this, that there's this constant baseline of unfairness and evil and that it seems to like nothing really seems to get better on a macro scale. Like if you feel bad, it's that you haven't done enough self care. It's yes. that you're not great. You're not grateful enough for your friends and family. And yes, that's right. You're not so, smi smiling like a like sitting slightly back at family functions, just like taking it all in, smiling like a moron. Like right, you need to spend more time doing that. Like doing hashtag gratitude at your family functions. Yeah, and it's like literally like Scott. It's like mm -hmm. no, no, don't worry if you can't afford it. And like literally, the mother leaves for no explained mm -hmm. reason. Like just have a kid. Let's continue this empire. Grow, keep growing the tax base, even though you can't afford to. You'll figure it out. Yes. What you love your family, right? You fucking piece of shit. Yes, that's right. We have to cobble together these like the only people we know to help raise this child. And you know what happens after a year? Like, what's this yeah. poor woman supposed to do? Like, this is horrible it's one of the most catastrophic things that could happen to somebody if this were real but because it's one of these shows it's like no oh, great now you have more opportunity for gratitude like god yes. fuck you yes fuck you like the people who fucking write this show don't raise their army with like a staff of 12 like yes. fuck you yeah i mean who is cleaning that mansion like you yes. know like i struggle very very much to clean our apartment and it has like two rooms in it like i don't I, like you know who's doing that yeah this is this was i was happy to go back to this is us after this i'm gonna start i'm gonna be going back to recapping this is us next week we ended up doing like a lot of time on this just because it's so fucking repellent yes it's the worst one of these i've ever seen i would doubt I, they would really have to, like, really grind to make something shittier than this. This really, really was bad. Yeah. And the wedding scene was repulsive. Like, that looked like a uh, uh, some kind of medication commercial, too. It was like a kind of anthropology, like, setting thing. Really, really gross. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was like a Pinterest yes. fucking night, oh, night yeah. wedding. Yeah. Oh, it, the whole, like, the aesthetic of this was, like, very Pinterest. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the wedding ends. They get yeah. married. Luli gives, like, a narration about how, like, her family is so great. But, yeah, this is, you know, so, oh, yeah, the thing I was going to say about the commercials that you noticed, too, like, do you notice how 
every ad was either for medication, only medications that are covered by Medicare Plan B. Like the only people in America who can afford medication, old people who have like the only socialized medicine in America and the army. Oh, oh my like, God, you're yeah, right. Yeah, the two things America makes, empire and fucking pills. Oh like the two, my God. Our two things while this fucking shitty slop made by free, like, Sex maniacs and freaks just plowed into our heads. Oh, my God. You're right. And, like, I mean, those commercials do the same kind of, like, identity thing. Like, you know, this these are these people. You know, you, we look, they're diverse. Thus, you know, you're a good person for, like, what, accepting this on your TV or something? Yeah. Yeah. It's what a fucking what an awful exercise. Oh, God. God. Like, I felt really depressed after it was over. Like, it's just like, it's like serving up this, like, like, grievous narrative and offering you only, like, the, this, like, like, Pinterest boards, like, to, to understand it with. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly it. This was, I have to... I don't even know what I did. I think I was just like hitting the random page on Wikipedia for like an hour after I watched this. Yes. I was just, it was just like washing your eyes and mouth out after exposure to a chemical. Yes. Yes. I know. It, oh my God. It was so bad. It was so fucking bad. Oh uh, yeah. That was terrible. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you were able to help guide me through this because yeah, holy shit. I'm probably going to do it again another week because it's, I mean, it's like unavoidable. I'm going to start thinking about it if I don't view it for like over two weeks. Oh my God. Like, so you're going to continue to watch it? I might, I might have to because like, it's going to be canceled. Like, I don't feel like anyone watches this. This is like, it's like, if you already watched This Is Us, like, why would you watch this? Oh, like, This Is I Us like, is I way better. I don't want you to watch it because I love you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I don't want I, you to I see think it. it I think it's like if I only do every two weeks, I won't get like a toxic exposure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen some pretty bad stuff in my life, oh my so oh my god, some pretty bad media. But <laughs> that's true. Like you have a higher tolerance for it. I think you're right. I, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you no, know, uh, look. As long as this quarantine's going on, I'm watching these fucking terrible shows. You're doing 